much. Mark Lester is now joining us exclusively. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning. So those words, self-serving, no legal standing, not in the best interest of the children. That's what the lawyer for Katherine Jackson says about the possibility, your claim that you're possibly sure. Paris's father. How do you respond to that? Well, I would make absolutely no claim on on on, on Paris or any of the kids. Um, it's just something that happened. It's a possibility that one or all, very unlikely all, but one of those kids may be mine. But uh, are you being coy with me here? I mean, do you know definitively no. whether you are Paris Jackson's father? No. No idea? No idea. And even if I was, it would act, make absolutely no difference to the status quo of the family anyway. It, it, because it would make no difference to the status quo of the family or the status quo of the family, why are you, why are you talking about it? Why, why did you decide you wanted to speak about it? The story was going to go out in the UK and it was going to break. Uh, I had the option of sitting back and letting it go without my input into it. And I just made a decision that it would be better for me to come forward and state my case rather than it to be gone on behind my back without my uh, approval. And your family, you've got four children of your own. I have, and for them to, to hear that without me priming them would have would have would have been uh to say you know it would have been uh, surprising let, let, let's go back to that conversation that you had with michael jackson many years ago and it's, that's not just something that comes up it's not like hey mark let's go watch a ball game and by the way would you donate some sperm put it in <laughs> context for me we had conversations on the telephone and uh michael was very shy when it came to women and he confided in me that he had found it very difficult to actually uh, do the sexual act. Um, he knew I had three, at the time, three lovely girls. Uh -huh. And so I just jokingly said, well, look, Michael, if you don't want to do it, maybe I'll do it for you. But, but that's a very different thing, because if he's uncomfortable with the act of having sex with a woman, he could still use his own sperm exactly to become the biological father of a child. Why did he need your sperm? Exactly. Uh, that I don't know, because uh, whether he wanted to increase the chances of, of the, uh, the artificial insemination. Um, Did he say I, he had some concerns about his own viability as a, as a father? He, no, not really. He just said he was very, very nervous, and he, did, he didn't feel that he, he was up to actually going through the act. So when you did donate sperm, though, Mark, did, did you say to him, and by the way, if you decide to use this, if this actually is something you decide to move forward with, I think I deserve the right to know? No. When I, when I gave it, I, I made the decision. That was it. I had given something as a gift, and I didn't want any, anything in return for it. That was it. End of story. You were married at the time I was. that this happened. Did you discuss this with your wife? Because if, you know, any spouse would want to know if it's possible their husband becomes a biological father <laughs> of another child. Correct. Well, my wife and I, well, my wife at the time, we were having a lot of issues. And we were, although we were living together, we were living kind of almost separate lives within the household. Uh, she certainly... One, she, whatever I did, she would do the opposite. I mean, she was, she was a difficult lady, and she didn't like the Michael Jackson thing. Me being with Michael, she didn't like the idea of, of anything of actually me and my kids enjoying ourselves. It seemed to be alien to her, which uh, is very sad. So, of course, this was completely confidential. Nobody, nobody knew until a couple of weeks ago. She, she has since done an interview, as you know, with one of the London tabloids. She has, but that was expected. Well, but let me just see, let you mm. see if you can comment on what she's had to say. She says, first of all, that, that this story of sperm donation doesn't work in timing or in truth, and, and that even you have exaggerated your relationship, the depth of your friendship with Michael Jackson. So how do you answer that? That's, that's what she would be bound to say. I mean, she, I think it's probably out of uh, the fact that she wasn't informed that she, she feels that she was sort of left out of it in some way. 
So Paris Jackson was born 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you were the godfather of Michael's children. He's the godfather of your children. So as you spent time with the Jackson children and you started to see Paris grow up, we're looking at a picture right now. Here you are on one side of the screen. Here's Paris Jackson on the other. Did you ever look and say, wait a second, I think there's a striking similarity, if you do believe there is one? No. I mean, Michael, Paris is Michael's daughter. Michael, whether or not he's the biological father, is irrelevant. Michael, but, but is it relevant? Are you possibly the biological father? And when you look at that split screen right there, as our viewers are looking at it, do you think there's a resemblance? She's absolutely beautiful, and you know, I would be honoured if 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 that came from 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 me. I mean, she's a beautiful child. She's a highly intelligent kid, and as all the Jackson kids are. Your, one of your children, one of your daughters, Harriet, is in our studio. She's 15, mm-hmm. and she's fine with this. I want to make sure that people don't think I'm catching her off guard. Um, I wonder if you know, we can put a split screen up to see if there's a resemblance between Harriet, again, 15, and Paris, who's 11. What do you think when you see that? It's very difficult to see your own kids because you always see them in a, in a different way. Um, it's like hearing a tape recording of your own voice. It never sounds the same. Um... They both got relatively high cheekbones. I mean, there are uh, similarities. But it's uh, not an oh gosh moment where you go, wow, of course. No, I, I think Olivia, my younger daughter, it would would actually it, it looks more like Paris. But everyone seems to have picked up on the fact that Harriet has this resemblance. But. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. You, you've said that you'd be willing to take a paternity test. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, if that was necessary. But, I, you know, the, I, I, I must stress, though, my, those kids are Michael Jackson's children. You know, they're, they're with their family. They're with the, in, in the place where they should be. There's, there's, you know, if I was called upon to do it, if there was any... But you don't want it to happen. It's not something you would push for. I, to I answer really, some question in those, your own I mind. love those kids. I'm the godfather to those kids. I just really, all I want to do is to remain in contact with my family and Michael's children's uh, children to be... Have you been in contact with them since Michael died? Uh, sadly not. And why is that? I, I don't know. I, I guess within the Jackson family, there you know, there's a, a lot of upheaval. You know, this was a very sudden and sad event. And uh, I mean, Michael hasn't even been buried yet. It's. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you know, when things settle down, and in a couple of months, maybe that we'll uh, be able to establish some sort of telephone contact. And who knows? Maybe we'll we'll pop over to Los Angeles. And I would dearly love those children to come and visit us in England. They've been to my house and. So you- your message to the Jackson family, you just want to continue a relationship and a friendship. You're not looking for a say in their upbringing or any money, any monetary <laughs> gain from any of this. No, no, not at all. I just love that. I'm their godfather. You know, I am the children's godfather. And I really just want my kids get on so well with their, the, with Micah's children. And, um, you know, I just, I, I just want to remain, you know, uh, as friends and uh, to have that contact. Maybe come see them once a year. Who knows? Uh, you know, I'm not saying that we phone every day, but uh, you know, just to have some form of contact would be nice. Mark Lester, Mark, thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. My pleasure.